Best for soil. Crop rotation. Practical information. Hi, I'm Saskia and I work at Delphi, a research and advisory service in arable farming. To manage a good soil health is a sound crop rotation of great importance. How you do that, and everything that comes with it, you can see in this Best for Soil video. A good crop rotation can help to prevent crop damage by pests and diseases, while also increasing and maintaining soil health. Besides prevention of pests and diseases, it plays a major role in soil fertility and structure. Crop rotation is a planned order of growing specific crops on the same field. The succeeding crop belongs to a different family. In order to press soil-borne diseases and nematodes, a rotation can be kept very simple, but the more diverse, the more benefits can be utilized under the precondition that the specific crops are used in the right sequence and ratio. To design an appropriate crop rotation, it is important to understand the underlying processes and to follow the right steps. Soil-borne diseases and nematodes require a susceptible host plant in order to survive and multiply. They can multiply in or on the infected susceptible host plant. After harvest, crop residues and dead plants will potentially contain huge amounts of pathogens and nematodes. With the decomposition of the crop residues and plants, they will be retained in the soil, thereby increasing the level of infestation in the soil. This increases the pressure on the next crop to the point that its cultivation is possibly not economically feasible anymore. This continuous cycle can be interrupted by growing a non-host crop that is not susceptible to the diseases and nematodes present in the soil. This action harnesses natural factors, such as starving of the pathogen or antagonism by beneficial soil microorganisms, meaning that the populations of the pathogens and nematodes will decline to the point that potentially susceptible crops can be grown successfully again in the same soil. A good crop rotation prevents pests and diseases, reaching a population density in which they affect crop yield and quality, resulting in an economic loss for the farmer. It increases or preserves soil health and thus helps to maintain the profitability of the crop. First of all, a sound crop rotation is adapted to the local conditions. Apart from market opportunities and soil type, the infestation level of already present diseases and pests determines the rotation scheme. Determination of the soil infestation level by nematodes is relatively easy and in many countries, public or private laboratories offer such services. In contrast, only a few of such methods exist for soil-borne fungal pathogens, for example, for verticillium. And this analysis is only available in a limited number of countries. Therefore, a sound rotation is especially important to manage fungal soil-borne diseases. The host range for soil-borne diseases and nematodes has to be taken into account. Some diseases and nematodes have a rather narrow host range, for example, potato cyst nematodes, while others have a wide host range, such as Trichodorus spp. The design of the crop rotation is highly dependent on the crops and which diseases or nematodes are already present in the field. Here we will design a sound crop rotation with the help of the Best for Soil database. One example is a field on a sandy soil in northern Europe. We have a rotation of eight years. The main crops are potato, onion and carrot. Typical soil-borne diseases and nematodes for these crops are Verticillium dahlia, Sclerotinia sclerotium, Fusarium, Foma terrestris, Alternaria radicina, free-living nematodes, the nematodes Pratilenchus penetrans and Trichodorus spp. Within this rotation, we grow potato two times and the other crops are sugar beet, cabbage and winter wheat 
with rye as green manure crop. A general rule for the frequency is to grow a crop no more than once in the two or more years. For many crops, however, a longer period is required. In this rotation, for example, the main crop potato is alternated by three sequences of other crops. Soil analysis and observations from previous crops show that the following nematodes are present in the field. The nematode, Pratilentius penetrans, and the nematode, Trichodorus spp. The level of nematode, Pratilentius penetrans, is above the damage threshold. Therefore, we look into the Best for Soil database to see which non-host plants we can grow. After filling in our proposed rotation, the scheme shows at which level a nematode could multiply on the chosen crops and at which level the crops suffer from the nematode. As we see here, Trichodorus is not always harmful but multiplies on all crops. Therefore, we decide to introduce the cover crop, Tagetes patula, since Tagetes releases a substance deadly for Pratilentius when these nematodes enter the plant. We see that another weakness of our plan is the sequence of winter wheat and the choice for rye, because Pratilentius multiplies strongly on rye, while only a little on sugar beet. Even better options, instead of rye, are Japanese oat and summer barley. So we decided to switch sugar beet with summer barley and replace rye by Japanese oat and tagetes as green manures. This is an example of an improved crop rotation. In the best for soil fact sheet about crop rotation, you find more examples of rotation designs, such as a typical arable rotation in northern Europe of winter wheat, potato, and winter oil seed rape. Other considerations when designing a crop rotation will now briefly be discussed in this video. Some crops are grown after each other to complement each other's needs. A legume forage crop, which fixes nitrogen, can be grown before a crop which demands high nitrogen levels. A deep-rooted crop, such as summer barley, can be grown after crops such as sugar beets to improve the soil structure and water infiltration. Also, deep rooting crops bring back nutrients which were leached to deeper soil layers. Instead of leaving the soil bare after harvesting the main crops, you can grow cover crops after all crops harvested no later than October the 1st. Be aware that also for cover crops, you should consider the nematode levels in relation to host and non host plants. Cover crops prevent leaching of nutrients leave residues to maintain soil organic matter levels. They protect the soil surface and feed the soil food web. Cover crops also promote the formation of highly stable soil aggregates that can resist eroding from heavy rainfalls and winds. Learn more about cover crops in the Best for Soil videos about cover crops and green manures. To get the most out of your rotation, where possible, integrate with other practices, such as cover crops. In any case, consider which parasitic nematodes and diseases you have or expect to have, and adjust your rotation and choice of cover crops, green manure, to reduce them. The Best for Soil database can be used to choose the right crop for your situation to design a sound crop rotation.